Hello, I'm Robert Griffin, the Executive Minister here at the Sunshine Cathedral in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I want to thank you for joining us for worship via the internet today. And if you are ever in the Fort Lauderdale area, let me personally invite you to stop by and worship with us on Sunday mornings at 9 and 1030 a.m. We also invite you to join us on our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter. But for this moment, let's go inside and see what exciting worship opportunity lay in store for us. Holy and beautiful, the custom which brings us together in the presence of the Most High. To face our ideals, to remember loved ones, to give thanks, to be enlightened, and to be strengthened. In this consecrated space breathes the worship of ages. Three unseen guests attend, faith, hope, and love. Let all our hearts prepare them place. Amen. Our first reading is from the wisdom of Ebba Curtis Hopkins. God is the only substance there is in the universe, and God is spirit. The spirit is all there is anywhere, and wherever is not of spirit is nowhere, has no real existence, is but a figment. It is as if a shadow tried to prove itself something substantial, in these human words, God's voice is heard. Our second reading is from the wisdom of U.S. Anderson. The self is timeless and eternal. It is the self of the universe, and it is the self of each of us. It was never born and will never die. It enters into each of its creations and becomes that creation. It is the eternal stuff that occupies all space and time. In these human words, God's voice is heard. Our third reading is from the Gospel according to John. All that God has is mine. In these human words, God's voice is heard. Our fourth reading is from the book of Psalms. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit? 
to be out of your sight. If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you're already there waiting. Then I said to myself, oh, God even sees me in the dark. At night, I'm immersed in the light. It's a fact, darkness isn't dark to you. Night and day, darkness and light, they're all the same to you. In these human words, God's voice is heard. Well, when I was growing up, my family was a um, hodgepodge of, of everything, and um, religiously speaking, and so, well, all kinds of ways of speaking, actually, but also but specifically religiously. I mean, we had, we had Baptists and uh, Church of Christ and, and Mormons and Catholics and Methodists and Pentecostals, and so it was, you know, mostly the, the, big, the big part of the family were all sort of Baptist and Catholic, but on the, on the fringes there was some of everybody. And so I got to be exposed to everything. And I liked it all, actually. I, I loved church. I would just go to, from one church to the next. I would go to, with this cousin and that cousin, and I just loved it all. It was all so fascinating to me. My grandmother, which was strange because she was Baptist and she'd married a Catholic. And so she said, you're going to get confused. Well, you all worked it out, you know, but you're going to get confused. Just pick one and stick with it. Well, I was never able to follow that advice. But I, so I would go to, to, to the, the Baptist church where I was baptized a couple of times, in fact. Um, <laughs> you just can never be sure, right? And... Um, and, I, and I, I went to the, to the Pentecostal church where, where uh, I discovered the various gifts. Some of them I later returned. And, um, <laughs> and I sort of did settle with the Catholic part of the family because, uh, you know, guys wore dresses and that appealed to me. And so, um, and then in college, I, I, I added to the mix. I added to the family. There hadn't been any Episcopalians, so I fixed that. And I became confirmed uh, in the Episcopal church. But this is what I discovered, that winding spiritual journey, going, going hither, thither, and yon, is that really people were seeking the same thing. They were trying to experience a, a more profound, in a more profound way, a unity with the divine. They were trying to discover their oneness with the source and substance of all life. And they had different traditions and they had different vocabularies, and they would argue fiercely with each other because these people got it right and these people got it wrong. And what I discovered is that there wasn't really so much right and wrong. There was just the different ways that people were trying to have the same experience or a similar experience, the experience of knowing that I am forever safe in a love that will last forever. We call that God. And we create a lot of stories around it and about it and a lot of, a lot of traditions and rituals about it. But really, what people wanted and deeply needed and deserved and were bound to discover in the fullness of time was that there is a love that will not, cannot let us go. And so what that looked like in the Baptist church is that Jesus represented the divine. Somehow that was the face of the divine. And so people would ask Jesus into their life, to come into their life and just sort of be in charge. And so Jesus would become their best friend and, and, their, and their boss, really. They would, they would call that Lord. And so, but that was saying, Jesus symbolizes God. If this God symbol comes into my life, now my life is immersed in God. I'm one with God. And the Catholic Church... The, the, the sacrament was very uh, central. And so Jesus, again, is a symbol of the divine. And the bread, uh, during the moment of consecration, would somehow become the real presence of Christ. And then we would come up and, and take that bread into ourselves. And so Jesus symbolizes God, and the bread becomes Christ, and Christ becomes a part of us. And so now, whew, long process, but a unification with the divine. In the Pentecostal church, uh, we were invited to have a baptism, an immersion into uh, the spirit. And so we would be spirit-filled, we would say. And uh, so again, an indwelling, an infilling of the power and the presence of God, a unification with the divine.
So they had their own vocabularies, and they had their own rituals, and they had their own traditions, and they had their own stories, but they had the same goal, to feel forever safe in a love that could not let them go. And that gave me such a respect for all of the traditions. Not that we need to take, uh, if something is very, if, if communion is very important to you, if, if Jesus is an important symbol in your life, if scripture is important to you, we're not trying to take any of that away. But we, uh, we do want people to realize that anything that points beyond itself into this deep and profound mystery of unconditional and all-inclusive love, anything that points us in that direction is a useful symbol. But anything that points to itself becomes an idol. Where we say, it has to be done my way. It has to be according to my understanding. And all those people who are trying a different way, they're wrong. And quite literally, in some of their stories, they're damned wrong. That they will be forever excluded from this love. And yet, the prophet Isaiah said that God's arm is not too short to rescue, not too short to hold us. Uh, the prophet Isaiah said that God is like a mother who comforts her child. The psalmist we heard today asks God in prayer, where could I go from your presence? There's no such place. I couldn't escape from your presence. Wherever I am, you are. If I'm up in the sky, you're with me in the sky. If I'm in the ground, you're with me in the ground. Wherever I am, God is. And wherever God is, all is well. And so however you got to the understanding or however you started on the path toward the understanding that God is an omnipresent love that will not and cannot let you go, you can honor that tradition. But if you, didn't, if, if you got sidetracked in those traditions and the symbol became the thing instead of pointing to the deeper reality for you, and maybe you were hurt or excluded by that, I'm glad you're giving spirituality another chance. I'm glad you're giving religious community another chance. I'm glad you are letting us tell you maybe in a new way, there's not a spot where God is not. You cannot escape the presence of God. The loving omnipresence that God is, is wherever you are. It will not let you go. It cannot let you go. You are part of the creation that God calls very good. And so the psalmist even tells us why that is particularly good news. Wherever I go, there you are. Can't get away from you. You are relentless. God is the perfect, the ultimate, the first stalker. We cannot get away from God's love. There's nowhere to go. God, it, it's in God, the Greek poet Epimenides said, that we live and move and have our being. The Sufi poet Rumi said, it's not just that we are a drop in the ocean. No, we are the ocean in a drop. We can't get away from divine love. It is the source and substance of all that is. We are one with God. That is the source of our wholeness. That is our liberation from fear and from self-loathing and from degradation. That is our salvation. Not something we have to earn or purchase or even believe certain things about. It's just something we discover as the truth of our being. And so the psalmist said, when I am in darkness, even that's okay, because darkness isn't dark to God. God is light. God is love. God is omnipresence. So my judgment of my experience may be that I am experiencing darkness. <laughs> the diagnosis, the betrayal, the money problems, the conflict, whatever it is, may feel like I am stuck in some muck and some mire. But even in the muck and the mire, God is with me. If I am in the ground, God is there. If I am in the sky, God is there. I can't get away from God. God is like Mama Rose. You'll never get away from me. You could climb the highest tree. I'll be there somehow. It's true for Mama Rose. It's Gypsy, you know that, right? Yeah. All right. Because we were going to start back from the beginning. Some remediation was going to be needed if you didn't know that. Scripture we'll get to, but you got to know, you got to know Gypsy. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> can't get away from the love that God is. And so when our experience feels like we're stuck in darkness, here is the affirmation from the psalmist. Darkness 
isn't dark to God. And in the darkness, we haven't left God behind. God is omnipresent, everywhere fully present. You can't be lost from something that's everywhere present. You can't be rejected by something that is everywhere present. You can't be separated from something that is everywhere present. So the love that God is, is expressing through you through your straightness, through your gayness, through your lesbianness, through your bi-ness, through your transness, through your questioningness, through whatever it is, however you are experiencing life, that is part of God's good creation. That is part of God's perfect manifestation. That is all that God is being present in that drop that you are. All that God is, is everywhere at all times. Right where you are, God is, and all is well. Right where I am, God is, and all is well. And this, this is the good news. Amen. Thank you for joining us today here at the Sunshine Cathedral. If you're ever in the Fort Lauderdale area, we invite you to stop by and worship with us on Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30 a.m. If you'd like to make a donation to the Sunshine Cathedral, or if you'd like to find out other resources that the cathedral has to offer, please visit us at www.sunshinecathedral.org. Until the next time, we look forward to seeing you here at the Sunshine Cathedral.